So we are in a moment right now. Um, just by a quick show of hands, can you raise your hand if you have used ChatGPT? OK. Everybody in the room has used it. Not just everybody in the room, but kind of everyone on Earth almost. We have this amazing, potentially transformative technology. And it's transformative because the nature of this kind of tool is different from any other tool that we've used before. First of all, you can send in natural language as inputs. Right? You just type to it, and it responds to you. It speaks to you in normal, plain language. You don't have to be a computer programmer to understand its output. That output is varied, and it feels often very human. And so here we are in this moment with this potentially transformative technology that has the potential to have impact on science and research and business and productivity and all kinds of impacts. Now, we can't unpack all of that today, but I thought it would be worthwhile to think about the impact of being in this moment for you in this room of being a learner with the availability of generative AI. And so the first thing I want to do is uh, discuss a research project that I uh, took part in uh, with my uh, collaborator, Oliver Hauser, who's at the University of Exeter. Now, Oliver and I were interested in understanding a kind of question about one of the fundamental activities of being human. And that is, how does the availability of AI ideas affect our creativity? And so we ran a study. We asked about 300 people to write a very short story uh, about a science fiction topic, say, uh, like an adventure on, an out, uh, on, on another planet. Now, importantly, what we did was we randomly gave some of those writers access to AI ideas. Now, they can do whatever they want with those ideas. They could choose to use the idea. They can remix the idea. They can combine ideas, or they can just flat out ignore it. But ultimately, they still have to write that story like everybody else. Then what we did is we took those uh, about 300 stories, and we sent those to a separate set of readers, evaluators. And we asked those evaluators, without them knowing whether or not those stories got ideas from AI, how creative do you think this story is? So again, quick show of hands. How many people in the room think that the stories written with generative AI ideas were more creative? And how many of you think that the stories written just by people alone were more creative? OK, interesting. So it turns out that the stories that received generative AI ideas were more creative. OK, hey, Anil, the talk is done. Great advice. Let's all go off and use generative AI to come up with our ideas for our work. OK, it might feel like you get this like, superpower, this super strength from generative AI. But, but importantly, the stories that got generative AI ideas all looked more like each other than the stories written by the people alone. In other words, the writers who got those ideas were just a little less original, just a little less themselves. So forget for a minute the fact that getting ideas from an outside source like AI might be unethical. Forget that fact. Forget the fact that maybe getting ideas and using that uh, uh, output from generative AI might be cheating. Right? It might break your school's policies, uh, maybe about plagiarism, for example. Forget those facts. What I would impress upon you is that using generative AI in this way for ideas to take your own place of what your ideas would have been takes a little bit away from you. Right? You lose a little bit of an opportunity to be your individual selves. OK, so Anil, what are you saying? Maybe, uh, maybe you're saying don't use generative AI. Again, maybe it's not that simple, again. Because this tool is now pervasive. It is available to us. And we, we are tempted to use it in so many ways. And so 
what I would ask you to think about, one question I would ask you to think about when you're looking at some work you have to do or some task you have to undertake, one question you might ask yourself is, is this work I'm doing, is this task I'm about to do core to who I am, who I'm going to be, or the work that I will do? Now, if the answer is no, it's not core to who you are or who you'll be, then maybe you want to use generative AI to substitute for your effort. For example, uh, you know, I've never been uh, the greatest artist. I don't know why. I just, it, it, it never stuck with me. I never took to it. I'm not sure why. So I asked ChatGPT to produce those images of muscles that you just saw a few minutes ago. Now, that's great. It came out, it came out I thought, pretty high quality. But I just, in, order to, in, in doing that, I decided I had to forego my own effort in building my own artistic skills. But I was willing to do that, because at this stage, in, in, at least in my life, uh, being an artist is not core to who I am or who I'm going to be. However, if what you're about to take on is core to who you are, then I would strongly suggest using generative AI to complement your work and your effort. Again, for example, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professor. Com producing ideas and discussing them is core to who I am. So I would never have asked GPT to come up with the, the presentation that I'm giving you right now. This is, this is who I am. The hard work of thinking about the work that I do, the research that I've done, how I want to think about it and make an argument and present it to you, that's part of what I do. And so I wouldn't ask ChatGPT to do that. I, I could, right? I could say, hey, ChatGPT, give me an outline for a 15-minute talk to students about generative AI and learning, an out will come an outline. Then I could take that outline, I can give it to another AI and say, hey, Ch you know, new AI, produce slides for me for this talk. And then I can feed those both back in and say, hey, ChatGPT, give me a script. I could do all of those things, but then I would forego the effort that I'm putting in to think about what I think is important, what I want to communicate. And I didn't obviously want to do that. OK. Now, what, what might be the most important thing that I can impress upon you right now is at this stage in your learning, cur in your learning experience, everything you do is core to who you are or who you will be. Everything you do, every little effort you make, every assignment that you do, every time you take an exam, every time if you're playing a musical instrument, every time you play some piece or practice it, everything you do now is core, if not to yourself right now because you don't feel like it's important, it is core to the people you are going to be. And so if that is true, and I strongly believe it is, then I would highly suggest that you use generative AI in a way that complements your effort in learning. OK, so how can we do that? What's a practical thing we can do is what you might ask. And so what I would suggest to you is think of generative AI as like a learning assistant who doesn't quite always get it right. right so ChatGPT and other AI are prone to some factual errors. They're prone to have some uh, uh, hallucinations. They might go off the rails a little bit. So even in this way of using generative AI, you have to keep your critical thinking uh, uh, fully on board with you as you're consuming its output. Now, what are some ways we can use generative AI as a learning assistant? OK, I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions. For one thing, don't ask it for the answers. Say instead, hey, I need some help with this topic. I'm, I have an exam coming up. Uh, it's on uh, photosynthesis. And I need some help understanding the process. Can you explain to me the logic behind photosynthesis and maybe uh, give me some examples to help me understand? That's one way. Another way is don't ask it for explanations. You provide the explanations. Hey, ChatGPT, I have this exam coming up. It's on uh, you know, uh, some war. Here's my understanding of the major battles. Here's my understanding of uh, the diplomatic actions. Here's my understanding of outcomes and international implications. What might, I, what might I have missed? Another option is have it ask you questions to probe your understanding. Again, you know you might have an exam coming up. Maybe it's on uh, uh, some, some, you know, some topic in physics. 
You can explain those topics to ChatGPT and say, give me a quiz. Help me understand. Oh, these questions you're asking me are too easy. Can you, can you scale up the difficulty in the questions? And you can use it to probe your understanding. But in all of these cases, in all of these cases, you are doing the hard work. And I would highly, highly encourage you to embrace the, embrace the difficulty, embrace the work, embrace the challenge. It is in our work, in our effort, that we become the people that we are going to be. Now, I would like to close by uh, reciting a poem um, by American poet uh, Joseph Fasano. I think he said this, he said this entire talk uh, um, as well or as better as I, uh, as well or better as I could have uh, in, in the form of a poem. And his poem is titled, For a Student Who Used AI to Write a Paper. Now I let it fall back in the grasses. I hear you. I know this life is hard now. I know your days are precious on this earth. But what are you trying to be free of? The living? The miraculous task of it? Love is for the ones who love the work. Thank you very much.